We are going to be taking a look at Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League today and asking the question, is it worth buying? And I already see one of the top comments being, short answer, no. Because I know a lot of people are very upset with the game. I do try and be very fair with any game, movie, anything I cover without just towing the line. I'm not going to be a, a centrist on it. I try and give it credit where it's due, and we're going to look at this game with no spoilers really first, uh, just minor things that you know that you're doing from the trailers, and then we're gonna take a look at it with spoilers, because as a video game, I think there, there is layers to this question, but I will try and be as succinct as I possibly can. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I have been doing this series for a little bit. I've covered a lot of other games on Is It Worth Buying? And I have two previous recent videos. This is actually kind of a trilogy on this game. So if you wanna see some of my other concerns and thoughts, those are up and I do think that they add context. Also, if you want to help support this channel, we do have our own store, cosmobunny.shop. You can use code DJAY123 at checkout for 10% off your purchase. We make comic book resin keychains, coasters, manga keychains and coasters. These are transformative art pieces that we create from manga and comics that are being thrown out that are too damaged to sell from local stores. And a lot of them do end up in the trash, unfortunately, not even the recycling. So we try and turn them into something fun for your home. Also, my wife makes really awesome handcrafted jewelry there that I think is very underrated and every purchase goes to help support our channel. We truly do appreciate it. Now, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has been met with a lot of tepid reception. Prior to its launch, there were a lot of people very excited and a lot of people very frustrated because there were many scenes leaked online that people were saying were out of context, that there would be more and that you should wait and see. Now that said, as Cosmo gets up and walks in front of the microphone, there is actually validity to some of those claims. Some scenes were taken out of context, but a lot of scenes were seen as mean-spirited and frustrating, which pushed a lot of people away from the game prior to launch and continue to do so. That said, a lesson a lot of you taught me, some of you more harshly than others, was that you should not buy a game based on a promise, that when you buy a game, you should really only be buying it because you like what it is right now. Yeah, if you wanna to wait to buy a game and see if it gets better, that's fair. No Man's Sky, Cyberpunk, games like that have gotten you know way better. Even Fallout 76 improved a lot. But when you are an early adopter and you buy the game at launch, you have to go through these growing pains and play a game that is not as good as it might be someday. It's a catch-22. If nobody buys that game at launch, it will never improve because there's no money in it. But the people who do buy it at launch, like Star Wars Battlefront 2, are getting an incomplete experience that inevitably they sink time into that isn't as good as the later game. That's a lot of the feelings that I'm getting from playing Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This is a game that has content, it has stuff in it, and it's not devoid of activities, but I find myself repeating a lot of activities over and over, such as the one where you have to get um, these basically not hostages, but I would say uh, victims who are going to be destroyed by Brainiac and bring them back to a bus so that they can be evacuated. I've had to do that mission type like three times now um, in my time playing the game. So it's one of those things where there are a lot of repetitive mission structures to the game, but there is also a lot of good. I do think that the game flows very well. I do think that the game as is has a very fun traversal system. I think the cosmetics are fun, although they are very clearly geared towards a battle pass system that I personally think most of the good stuff will probably be locked behind the premium track because that's how it always is. Because these battle passes are going to have two tracks. Basically, think about it like a train track. Think about it as if you had a one wheel train and you could go on the left track for free and unlock everything there. But if you wanted to go on the right track, you have to pay. That's what this is going to be, where on the top or bottom or whatever, it's free and you get stuff as you unlock it when those seasons start to come out. But actually to get the premium stuff, you have to pay money. They have made it very clear that playable content is going to be free. So things like the Joker coming from Elseworlds as a playable character, that's free. You can play as that character and his story expansions for free. But if you want to get the cosmetic stuff, you basically have to pay money. Now, what's frustrating about that from Rocksteady is that Rocksteady was very, very good with adding cosmetics to their game at very cheap prices. I think a lot of people forget that we did have to pay 
for DLCs that did contain costumes for the Arkham series. They were not all just in the base game. They did not include as many costumes as a game like Marvel's Spider-Man at launch, but there was a decent selection, and then you would pay very little amounts to get more of them over time. That said, my concern with this game mainly, from a gameplay standpoint without spoilers, is that this game is selling you on a promise of what it will be. Even with the story, things that happen in the story are apparently going to be undone or are apparently going to be added to in later seasons. Now, I can't post those things here because voice lines and other things like that have been posted on Twitter. Sometimes they're allowed to stay up, sometimes they are taken down. But my point with that is, there is a lot of selling the game on a promise of what will be added to the game over time. And that's something that I know a lot of my audience is frustrated with in modern gaming and doesn't really care for. I know you've heard me talk a lot of times about how I wish games were just complete at launch. Yes, you can add DLC, but I wish that your game was robust, that there was a lot to your game. For Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, for the base game, you're paying $70 uh, in the United States and basically $100 if you want to get the Ultimate Edition, uh, which is called something else. It's the Deluxe Edition in this case, which comes with Justice League costumes and other things like that. Now, as of me recording this, those costumes are exclusive to the $100 version. They're not in the store. There was no upgrade option that I could find on PlayStation Network or anywhere else. That might be changed. Like usually what they do is they add in a deluxe edition upgrade to any of these games on the store. But when I recorded this, that wasn't there. As a game itself, I think it is fun. I, I think that the gameplay is not the problem at all with this game. When you're traversing around as Harley and you're using bat tech, I think it's really cool. When you're using a speed force gauntlet as Captain Boomerang, I think it's fun. And you know what? I understand a lot of people say, well, these characters don't have this tech. And minor spoiler that you see in the, in the trailers, they take it from the Hall of Justice. So we already know that they take this tech to get around and be more evenly matched against the threat they're up against. Personally, I'm okay with that. Nobody really complains when Batman pulls out a random new suit of armor that he made for some situation contingency and he uses it to beat a villain because even though people call it plot armor and some people roll their eyes, it fits Batman that he would be, you know, prepared, right? It Just like in the same way it fits these villains that they would be opportunistic and take something that puts them more on an even playing field with everyone else. As a game, I like the traversal. I really enjoy the combat. I think it's fun. But I think the big catch here is going to be the universe it takes place in. This is where we're going to move into some spoilers. My wife Jill was actually asleep when I first recorded this, so she's going to be in the next little section here and then leave. But she had some thoughts she wanted to share too that didn't make it into this video originally that I thought would be good to hear from her perspective. I might chime in a little bit because you asked me to, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, instead of, so I don't want people to think I'm cutting you off. Oh, these are all very, very small, very minor spoilers, but something that really annoyed me in this game is the way Harley is treated as if she shouldn't be sexy at all and how she has to cover up. And it kind of, I've noticed that all of the women in the game are like this. You know, Wonder Woman usually wears a bit skimpier of an outfit. And then uh, in this game, even though I like her design, she's completely covered up. And in Harley's design, they even make a point to show her opening up the locker and show her revealing Arkham Knight outfit, which is, by the way, my favorite outfit for her. And then she slams it and is kind of mad about it and then puts on a much more covering outfit. And if you notice, all of her outfits are very covering and does not really show any skin at all, except for a little bit of her midriff. They kind of got rid of that aspect of the character. I've noticed that lately sexuality is a bad thing. Um, which is weird to me. Like I would think that how far our society has come, it, it wouldn't be because it's not seen as a bad thing in everyday life. Mm -hmm. But in media, if you have a female character who is sexual at all, it's seen as for the male gaze and for men to get off to. Yeah, and and I, I don't really like that attitude. I feel like that attitude is very odd. Like, because I, by the way, am friends with a lot of people who are trans. I'm friends with a lot of people who are lesbian. You're bi. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people I know who are not straight men who find Catwoman sexy and would definitely have some fun with Catwoman. 
given the chance, uh, but that doesn't make her a character that's not taken seriously. Like, yeah. that doesn't mean she's a dumb bimbo. Yeah, and it kind of comes across to me like they're acting like, oh, if we make Harley look and act sexy in this game, then we can't have her be taken seriously, and she's just a stupid bimbo. And that feels really sexist to me. It's weird. It's It's been this thing for a while now, too, and a big contributor to the writing of this game is Sweet Baby Inc., which is a company that is very, very progressive, very, very left-leaning, and this is not an attack on anybody who is, it's just that is the case. There have been presentations from the company leaked online where they've been very much like a preachy, you know, I hate, I hate the overuse of this term, but woke company that is always pushing ideology over storytelling. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at is there's a lot of like little world building things that don't really fit the Arkham universe and don't fit the interpretations of the characters we've seen. And don't fit Harley's personality that we've seen thus far. Right, and then you wanted to talk about the, she the scene with Deadshot, which I think is really something else. Yeah, so apparently it's okay for Harley to say, oh, well, you telling me not to touch you really makes me want to touch you, after he said, please don't touch me. Um, they are in a scene where Deadshot and the others are frozen, and basically if she touches them, she will be frozen too. And also, I kind of feel like it's also a little bit of a consent thing, where Deadshot just doesn't also want to be touched. Yeah, he's a very non-touchy-feely guy who just cares about his daughter, and he's very bitter. And instead of listening to him, she goes, Oh, well, I'll touch you anyway. And then she slaps his butt really hard and is, like, very sexual about it, grabbing his butt. And that's okay. She's allowed to sexualize the men in the game, but nobody is allowed to sexualize her because she's a woman, and that's not okay. Right, that's, that's really what the writing comes off as in a lot of ways. And maybe they will add in those Arkham outfits in later updates. I don't know. But the fact that they made a point of, like, showing it and then having her be like, ugh, and getting rid of it, I understand the idea from a character standpoint. I think they're trying to say, well, she was grieving Joker during this. Mm -hmm. So like she doesn't want anything to do with the Joker period of her life anymore. But she still is Harley Quinn. She still wants to be a clown. She's still OK with um, I'm not going to spoil this. This will be in spoilers. A very, very dark scene where she shows no mercy or compassion to a certain character that she definitely should mm -hmm. if she had grown in the five years as a character yeah, if she had grown as a person which they over and over tell you she did yeah so there's a lot of character inconsistencies with this it's performative like they want you to know like hey look we support women mm -hmm. hey look we support the gays hey look here's a flag for all of the gays yeah that we all support all of you do we have to mention again jill's bisexual here yeah i guess so i guess you have internalized whatever phobia i apparently i do even though i'm sitting here advocating for the women in the game to be more sexy only because <laughs> you want them for the male gaze and in this moment according to an activist that would mean you i identify you're using the male gaze i don't that know makes sense. I, I guess i'm a man now i made it up <laughs> there's a lot of weird inconsistencies in these games in this game that don't match up, that feel like they are co the company, like Rocksteady, trying to be like, yeah, we know we got in trouble for some sexual misconduct stuff, but look, we really respect women. I, I just kind of find it sad. It, it reminds me of the Tomb Raider treatment, the Tomb Raider reboot. Um, I love those games, but it's very obvious that they took away the sexual promiscuousness of Lara's personality and her outfits. And in the original games, she used that to her advantage, being a beautiful, sexy woman. She used that kind of thing to her advantage, and that was just a lot of her personality. And then they took that away from her in the reboots. And I feel like we're getting that with Harley now. And mm -hmm. it, I also kind of feel like we got that with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's not really like a super flirty character, but she always has worn a kind of a skimpier skirt, you know? And in this, she's completely covered up, like head to toe, completely covered up. And I like her design, but you can kind of tell it was created with, oh, we can't sexualize women in mind. Yeah, I think that they very clearly wanted to have their cake and eat it too. This is happening a lot in media. You even see it in Thor 4. It's okay for Taika Waititi to, against, you know, Chris Hemsworth's consent, I should say. I mean, he consented to be in the movie, but against his wishes, 
have Thor's clothes torn off on screen yeah, and show completely naked and show Chris Hemsworth's butt and stuff. And that's okay for the female gaze. Right, which people say doesn't exist. I've brought that oh, up before. Oh, excuse me. So sorry. that's not a term that's convenient for people. Have we also noticed that all of the other characters in the game, I guess except for Captain Boomerang, kind of show off their rippling muscles a ton? Well, that's true. You wanted to talk, by the way, and in a slightly different point about Captain Boomerang, by the way, because something that really sucks about this game is they make Captain Boomerang really funny, but they have gone out of their way to make this the most unlikable Captain Boomerang in a long time. Like, this guy is merciless. He is a psycho. He has There's... no compassion or empathy for anyone or anything. I mean, Deadshot himself has more compassion and empathy than Captain Boomerang, which makes no sense to me because there's famous comic panels even way back. Um, I know they're always different flashes of Captain Boomerang standing over what he believes is Flash's dead body and saying like, hey, we need to show some respect. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like we killed him, but like this guy was, you know, good mm -hmm. to us still. I have a few of examples of that. Um, it, it's been a very disappointing thing in this game for me because I actually really like Captain Boomerang. So one of the first things that I want to mention is the heavy spoiler. So uh, if you don't want to hear that, go away. Wow. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> basically, Flash dies. They kill Flash. And instead of being respectful about it, he pees on his dead body. It's really upsetting and disrespectful, especially to fans of The Flash. But that's how the characters would act the way they're written, Jill. There's no way for us writers to have written them differently. Yeah, he's supposed to be evil, but that doesn't mean you have to put him in the game as super disrespectful and mean to um, these characters. You know, you could just have him... Uh, kill Flash or something and then have them just respectfully stand over his dead body kind of like how in Arkham when you died as Batman you would get like a scene where the characters would stand over your body and talk to you but they wouldn't pee on your grave. Arkham did a good job of making villains villains who are evil even Joker but finding a way to make the the player not hate the villain. Like, and not feel disrespected by them. And they still feel charismatic. They don't just feel like a war crime. Captain Boomerang is giving war crime vibes. You know, something else that really bothers me about him is we see Poison Ivy come back as a child, reincarnated. She's about um, between the ages of like 6 to 12-ish. It's kind of hard to tell. I think she's probably around 8 to 12-ish. Um, and instead of talking with everybody else about it, he decides to put the bomb in her head when nobody's looking, a child. He puts a bomb in a child's head. And then afterward, everybody is kind of like, hey, this is kind of messed up. We shouldn't be putting a bomb in a little child's head who's just been imprisoned her entire life by Lex and then have her be imprisoned now by Amanda Waller. That's just kind of too far even for a villain. And Captain Boomerang's like, oh, but I already did it. Yeah. I had no qualms about it whatsoever. They find a real way to make some of these characters super unlikable. And yes, they're villains, but if you are making your playable characters unlikable, it does not make you want to keep playing the game. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really a huge flaw. I think I really like all the characters except for Captain Boomerang. Yeah, and some of the stuff Harley does I really don't think fits her. Like what? like bragging as she kills Batman. Mm -hmm. She shoots him in the face and she basically goes on a monologue about how I bet you never thought it would be me at the end. Mm -hmm. Like she thinks she like she thinks she's having her big villain moment. Yeah. But in this game, it seems like she wants to be better than that. Yeah. Like it doesn't seem like she's a good guy. Like she's not like Harley Quinn TV show or um, reformed DCAU Harley Quinn, like when she was trying to be good uh, or current you know, comics Harley Quinn, who's very clearly trying to be an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. She's still a villain, but it seems like she's on the path to wanting to be better. Like to becoming an anti-hero. And instead, she just kind of reverts back to, uh, like, her old Arkham self uh, in but that scene, basically but randomly. post-Arkham City. Yeah. And it, it doesn't fit. A lot of stuff doesn't fit, and it's done in order to add tension and drama. And but in, shock value. Instead, it's frustrating. Yeah, it, it's adding too much shock value. It's very obviously just done to be edgy. All of this stuff that we are mentioning is very obviously done just to be different, to be edgy, and honestly, in my opinion, some of it to be woke. Yeah. And it really disappoints me because I actually really like the gameplay of this game, and I really like the way the characters interact with each other. But a lot of the story beats and a lot of the way they're treating the female characters is extremely bothersome to me. Yeah, it's frustrating, and I think it's also telling and sad that if I had raised a lot of these points, people would have taken it differently. Mm -hmm. I think that that already shows you why some of these points are the way they are. Mm -hmm. 
which is just unfortunate because it to me feels like character assassination particularly of harley and of you know digger that's his name harkness Captain Boomerang. Uh-oh. Which you gotta be careful, you know, what neighborhood you say Captain Boomerang's real name in. <laughs> like, you better be careful if you see a cosplayer in a certain neighborhood who's Captain Boomerang and you say, hey, look, it's Digger. You're gonna get, like, if someone mishears oh, you, no. oh, you're gonna no. have some problems, all right? So I hope you liked my little part in this video. I know it's a little bit of a longer video, but it's something that is really important to me and it's something that I really wanted to talk about. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video going forward. And a lot of people are going into this game and they know the name of the game. They know it's called Kill the Justice League. That's an irrelevant point. But I think a lot of people were going into it expecting these characters to be treated with reverence, expecting these characters to be respected, and expecting these characters to find a way to survive. I think a lot of people went into this game and they were looking at the story and they were thinking, yes, the goal is to kill the Justice League, but they won't do that in their own game. There's no reason they'd go that edgelord route of like introducing Superman and killing him in his first appearance in this universe. That's stupid, right? Well, that's exactly what they do with pretty much everybody. The Justice League does die. There is not a fake out. It's not a plot device that's like, oh, well, actually, no, they're dead. Uh, you kill them. That's it. They die. The ones that you don't really directly kill still die. Now, the thing is with later content in this game, it's being heavily implied by people who have insider knowledge, by people who have been releasing voice lines, that there's more story to come with the Justice League. Not flashbacks, but in the future. I don't know how much I can say about this, because WB is very, very touchy with this kind of stuff, and I personally try and avoid my channel being a target of copyright strikes, even though this video is very clearly legally under fair use and commentary, criticism, and is transformative. But... I do believe a lot of these companies don't care if it makes them look bad. So what I can tell you is that there's plenty of things online with very easy Google searches that imply that this is not the end of those characters, that there will be more story to them. And some of you are going to say, well, how does that happen when a character is dead? And I'm going to say, comic books, yay! Comic books really, really like to do the Jesus Christ angle. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful with that, but the idea of like this character died and they came back. They really like to do that angle because they're able to get the emotional impact of a death, but also bring back a character and use them again. I think comic books usually use it for money. And my frustration with Suicide Squad is I kind of think that that's the same direction they're going. A lot of this story is fun with the character interactions, the way that they play off each other and the way that their styles are different, but able to be played by anybody. Like you can pick up Harley, Boomerang, King Shark, whatever, and you can play as them very easily, but they also do feel different enough from each other that they don't feel like clone characters. I think those kinds of things are really fun. And I do think exploring Metropolis, you know, going through the Batman exhibit, which was like a little mini museum entertainment exhibit, going through the Hall of Justice's uh, little museum that commemorates the Justice League, finding things like that and meeting characters we haven't seen before, those things are all very fun and interesting, and I think that they prop the game up a lot. But that said, if you're expecting respectful send-offs to your favorite heroes, that's not going to happen. That's not what this is at all. And even if they do find a way to bring them back later, I don't personally think it undoes the damage of seeing your favorite hero have a bullet put through their head as someone mocks them, or seeing Captain Boomerang literally pee on the corpse of the Flash. Those things don't really fit this universe, in my opinion. Yes, I understand a lot of people are going to say that the characters are acting in character. They're villains. They're going to be bad. But I don't really see how that applies here. Yes, even if the characters are acting in character, let's just say they are, I still think this comes off mean-spirited as writing choices to a lot of people, and as a follow-up to the Arkham universe, it's just off-putting. It's off-putting to see your childhood heroes be treated disrespectfully. It just is. You know, like, it, it's not even subverting expectations anymore as much as it is just being edgy. I've talked ad nauseum about the Arkham series, and I've talked a few times about how I sometimes, as a content creator, feel boxed in by it. There are times where people I feel like really don't respect me, and they just think I'm the Arkham content machine. They think, hey, Batman boy, get back to it. And they don't really care about anything else I have to say. And not to be all wishy-washy and, and feelings here, 
uh, but that sometimes makes me feel a little bad. You know, that that's frustrating when you're trying to be creative. This game feels like it was written from that perspective. It genuinely feels like it was written by people at Rocksteady who were like, oh, fine, they want more Batman. They don't care about anything else we do. Oh, we'll give them Batman. We'll parade his corpse around the city like a pinata. That's what it feels like to me, where it's just kind of like a mean spirited writing choice where it feels like it was done for edginess, to get attention, to get headlines, and to get people to play the game. But even if they reverse these decisions, by the time they do, I don't think a lot of people will care. I probably will, because I'm a psycho and I can't let go of characters and universes I like, but a lot of people will move on. They'll disregard this game. The amount of comments I see saying, this game is not canon to me, I don't care, far outweighs the amount of people who I've seen excited. So I think that when you're selling a game based on a promise where you do something in your main story but then you're going to either undo it or greatly expand on it later on it's a mistake because by the time you get to later on a lot of people will not care and even if there is a way to respectfully change those things you can't change the disrespectful writing choices to fans and characters that were done in the game in its base game you could use a time travel resurrection technology reverse flashpoint, random, whatever, crisis, BS they want to make up for this game, whatever, to go back and fix things, but those things still happen and they're still going to leave people with a bad taste in their mouth. I think a lot of people have been left with a bad taste in their mouth by this game because they wanted a great respectful follow-up to the franchise they grew up with, they wanted to see more of this universe, but Rocksteady never really took the jump and expanded this universe when they had a chance. They never did do anything like Superman. They never did do anything like a Flash game. And WB never really got anyone else, any other studios, on this universe to expand it. It never really grew. So to try and force growth with Suicide Squad was already a tall order, but then to kill off a lot of the characters that people were here to see makes it even worse. Personally, I don't see this game as very worth it to a lot of you that watch this channel. This game is something that I think has fun gameplay. I do think that there were people involved who did care about it. Not everybody was spiteful or anything like that. Um, but when I see things online, like developers even, I've seen say things um, without putting a certain one on blast, like, well, I worked at Rocksteady and all we care about is the people who enjoyed it. You know, stuff like that, where it very clearly comes off like, yeah, you might not like it, but F you. And doubling down on decisions, alongside the game. I feel like there's so many things in the game and outside of the game that people are seeing that are putting them off to it and not making them excited. And that's too bad. I think this game had a lot of promise and I do think that there are ways that you could improve it. I do think that there are ways you could exponentially fix the story and go back and change things. But I, I really think the damage is kind of done from the base game where a lot of your most passionate fans for these characters they're not going to return for later seasons. Like, let's say you randomly resurrected uh, Batman in season 12. I don't think a lot of people are going to stick it out to that point because they're so put off by the way that the, that the story was executed. It's not the fact that the characters died. This is a misconception that I wish people would drop. I'm gonna spoil a couple games and stories here, okay? So if you hear something and you really don't wanna hear it, maybe mute your thing for 30 seconds. Red Dead Redemption 1. You know, obviously John Marston dies. People don't really complain about John Marston's death. It wasn't even the most respectful send off ever, but he died as he lived, fighting, kicking, screaming. You know, like he went out the way that he lived and he was, he had become a mostly honorable man. People were okay with that. Iron Man sacrificed himself, um, you know, for Avengers Endgame in order to save the universe. Uh, you have characters, obviously, like Joel, who a lot of people didn't like the way that character was sent out because they found it a disrespectful execution, uh, both literally and figuratively, of the story. That's the problem that people have here. People need to drop this narrative that people just need to grow up and they're upset because their favorite char character didn't win. Empire Strikes Back ends with Luke losing and it's arguably a lot of people's favorite Star Wars movie. Revenge of the Sith, the same thing. The heroes do not win in Revenge of the Sith. If anything, they get a small, tiny victory at a massive loss, but people love it. It's not the fact that the heroes don't win, it's the fact that people find the writing disrespectful to them, to their time, especially by acting like they're gonna finish the story over these seasons and add to it, and they find the gameplay fun, 
but not valued at $70 for a follow-up to a universe they grew up with and are very emotionally attached to. Now that said, as a closing thought, I appreciate when my audience is kind to each other. I don't like when people who enjoy this game are bullied. I've seen people who say, hey, I really have fun with this game, and then people dogpile them. Not cool, I don't endorse that kind of garbage at all. But I also don't really care when people take a swing back when someone's disrespectful to them. Like I've seen a lot of people be disrespectful to me over this game and say that I should get over it, grow up and just like it. And at that point, I really have no problem responding to it. I think that's equally immature. I wish people would just treat this as what it is. It is a game. The story might improve over time, but as a lot of people have said in my comments, it should not have to. We should not be in a position where we have to wait for the game to get better. The game should just be good at launch. And then if you want to add stuff onto it, that's great. But when you have to walk back a lot of your creative decisions because they were done for shock factor and to upset audiences, I think that that's mean spirited, frustrating, and just not satisfying narratively. In a closing thought, superhero stories were originally created to lift people up, to inspire them, to make them want to be a better person. And while not every story will do that, I personally don't see anything in this game that does that. There's really nothing that accomplishes that goal. Nothing leaves me feeling inspired or hopeful when I play Suicide Squad. It just feels like a fun Call of Duty-esque distraction where I get to play as some fun characters but the people who wrote it really wanted to use previous characters to prop up the new ones. It feels to me like bad wrestling writing, when they take a veteran wrestler and they have a day one rookie just kick his ass. You can do that, and maybe it works once in a while, but for the most part, it's gonna come off narratively dissatisfying and turn people off to your brand. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this game. I know a lot of you have a lot of thoughts on it, um, I do my best on these videos to be fair, and I also do want to say that they did give out $20 of virtual currency to people who were already playing the game, who experienced the, the servers go down a couple times. So there are community things they've done that I think are cool and nice, but a lot of things here just feel like milking it, and I just don't see a lot of people sticking around to find out. So, interested in your thoughts, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I do have a new channel, JRPG, that's J-A-Y-R-P-G, where you can watch RPG videos on games like Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, the Soulsborne games like Dark Souls. So there's a lot of fun stuff over there that I hope you'll check out. And finally, again, our store. We have a discount code of DJAY123 on CosmoBunny.shop and DJAY123 is our Fortnite creator code that goes to help support this channel, and we really do appreciate you. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everybody, stay shway.